Geopolitics and Empire is joined by French intellectual and author Thierry Maison, who is the founder of Voltaire Network International, a web of non-aligned press groups dedicated to analysis of international relations. His books include 9-11, The Big Lie, and Before Our Very Eyes, Fake Wars and Big Lies from 9-11 to Donald Trump. Thank you for joining me, Thierry. Hello. I've been a huge fan of your website, uh, Voltaire Network, and have been reading it for more than 10 years. Some of my dissident professors told me, if you want to have a better understanding of the world, you need to read a Voltaire, Global Research, Executive Intelligence Review, and uh, other such websites. And uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been a huge fan of your work, and I wanted to get your thoughts on what's happening in the world today. I believe you have said that the current crisis in Ukraine was instigated by Washington and uh, Kiev, and that's something I tend uh, to believe, and that their goal is to remove Russia from the international scene, that they are trying to wipe out all traces of Russian culture in the West. And secondly, they're trying to weaken the European Union. And interestingly, this week, uh, President Putin said, what's going on today is the demolition of the unipolar world system that was created after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Can you give us your thoughts, your analysis on, on how you see you know, what's happening in Ukraine? And if you think this is the end of the unipolar moment and what does all of this mean? Um, you will have a totally different vision of uh, conflict. If you think this conflict only since uh, two months, or if you observe the world since 30 years, if you see the world since, since 30 years, you see how the US tried to impose this unipolar system and uh, how much conflict they have created, how much people they are killed everywhere in the world. If you see only since two week, two, two months, you will say, oh, but uh, if there is some problem for the Russian in uh, in uh, in Ukraine, why they don't go to the United Nations? You know, you, you will not understand really what happened. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, since the collapse of the uh, Soviet Union, the U.S. tried to to prevent any other uh, power to to challenge them. Um, so, at that time, Russia was was nothing. It was totally collapsing. And uh, the first idea of these people was to stop the European Union. They, they think uh, European Union is uh, uh, a great market, but must never be become uh, uh, a political power. So what happened now is the direct consequence of this uh, way of thinking. You see the conflict, the armored conflict in, uh, in Ukraine, but the reaction to this conflict is not against Russia, it is against the Europeans. They use this conflict to, to popularize, to, to, uh, uh, to create a, 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 an economic collapse in, uh, in, the, in Europe. And you will see, it, it will arrive. It will arrive. Of course, if you want to to uh, uh, attack the uh, Russia, it's not possible because Russia is much more powerful than the United States on a military level, I say. Of course, uh, not at all on the financial level. But uh, <clears throat> in, in uh, every conflict, when you have Finance against military, but so will the military go on always. And do you, do you see? Do you feel that uh, Russia will be 
successful in its uh, goals, in its operation? Um, how, how do you feel or do you feel that this situation in Ukraine will continue for, for many years, like a Yugoslavia type situation? Um, or, or do you feel people talk about a World War Three type scenario? Uh, where do you think things will go? Yeah. Since uh, um, I think 10, 12 years, something like that, uh, you have a, a big development of the Nazi in Ukraine. But Nazi is not the exact uh, word. They are boundaries, boundaries. They are followers of Stefan Bandera. That's not the same thing than the, than the Nazi. But during the World War, they were all working all together against the population. But uh, the, the, the boundaries, um, they, they, uh, they think racially. They think that uh, uh, they are from uh, German or Scandinavian origin, but not Slav, not at all. So then the, the Russian Slavs are under uh, And during 12 years, this group grow, grow, grow in Ukraine. Right now, two, two months ago, they, they taught in the, in, uh, in the schools that uh, Ukraine was uh, an independent country only uh, because the Nazi helped them. This is the official thinking. They, they put a lot of uh, um, sim Nazi symbol everywhere. They build uh, uh, monuments to Stefan Bandera and to the Nazi. So, but the first um, point for the Russian to destroy all these Nazi symbols, to, to clean the, the handbooks in the schools. And of course, it must be, um, it, it must be evident for everybody such thing, because this way of thinking uh, put us immediately to the war. It's, it's obvious. We, we can't accept inequality between the, the human beings. But since, uh, since Poroshenko, I think, President Poroshenko developed the idea that uh, um, there's people in Donbass uh, must be whipped out of, uh, of the scene. In a, in a public uh, speech, he's, he said that uh, he will not give them any uh, allocation, any uh, any support. It's only for the people, for the, the German and Scandinavian people, not for the Slav people. Uh, the, the people in Donbass uh, uh, reject the, this government in Kiev. They ask for uh, an autonomous system for them. Uh, first, Kiev accepts with the Minsk agreement, but quite immediately, they refuse to accept this agreement they are already signed. So since eight years, you have a, a war against the, the people in Donbass. And uh, this rule of the, the Nazi system is so big that uh, just before this war, 
you have one third of the armored forces of Ukraine are Nazi forces. One third. Well, that's official. You know, you have the the army, and you have what what they call the national guard, of the the territorial guard, and these people that's only Nazi militias. These Azov battalions, right? For instance, you have the the Azov regiment, but that's only a part of this uh, uh, Bandarian system. They have. Uh, um, MPs also, you know, uh, they created uh, an official Nazi party and they enter in the National Assembly. No, nobody protests. That's very surprising for me. How the West could accept such things. But uh, they are against Russia and that's all for us. A message from our sponsors. The Nomos app will help you survive COVID-1984 and the Great Reset. Nomos is a time bank that can be used by communities anywhere in the world. You just need to talk people into using it. For example, if you go to your barber for a 30-minute haircut, your barber receives 30 minutes in his time bank. He can then use that time to pay for an appointment with the doctor. I've spoken to the developer who is passionate about creating solutions for surviving and thriving in the apocalypse. Nomos is available in both English and Spanish. Hurry and visit nomos.net before they roll out the cashless society and put you in the algorithm ghetto. Also, if you need health insurance that covers you wherever you may roam, check out my friend James Guzman's borderless health insurance. One of the great things about living internationally is saving money on health care, but private care overseas can be expensive. Go to borderlesshealthinsurance.com to watch a short presentation on expat and digital nomad healthcare and sign up for a free consultation to review your options. Geopolitics and Empire needs funding. You can leave a donation, book a consultation, or become a member, which gets you access to my brief weekly commentary, a monthly newsletter of my thoughts, a private telegram, a monthly members group call, and my second premium broadcast called Dissident Thinker, where I conduct interviews and provide solo analysis. Dissident Thinker is also available on Rockfin and for supporters on Locals. Huh? Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I'm a Slav. I guess I would also be considered a uh, Untermensch. Uh, and, and in fact, you know, my, my family tells me my grandfather, a uh, in, in, uh, Croatian grandfather, had been a uh, a Nazi prisoner for some time. He survived um, during the World War II. But um, you also talk a lot about false flag uh, operations for many years. I've been studying this phenomenon. There are a lot, a lot of great people like uh, Daniela Ganser, the Swiss historian who talks yes, about yes. these things. I've, I've interviewed him um, uh, in the beginning of this when I created this podcast. Uh, you, you know, 9-11, I think people listening to this program are well aware about 9-11, you wrote a book on it. Um, Washington and Brussels have recently been talking about false flags a lot in Ukraine. Uh, if something happens, I will first believe it was done by NATO or the CIA or MI6. I think it was Liz Truss is her name, the UK foreign secretary. Uh, this week, I think she was saying that Russia has conducted or is about to conduct uh, a false flag. I don't know how people believe this anymore. It's the same story. We see it now. We see it with the Syrian fake uh, chemical attacks, false flag with uh, Iraq war, with the Vietnam war, uh, just so many times the West carrying out false flag operations. Um, what are your thoughts about this, these discussions of, of false flag operations and if they will carry one out and use it to escalate uh, the war? Um, first, uh, false flag already works, already. You know, uh, we are human. When we see on, uh, on TV some people uh, dying, some people crying, that, that's emotional for us. So we are not able at that time, at that very time, we are not able to think. Uh, when uh, they, they show, for instance, uh, uh, in Ukraine, people lying on the ground, all these bodies, 
you say that's horrible and immediately you have the answer to your um, to your emotional reaction immediately they will say to you that's the russian that's the russian the criminals are the russians so <clears throat> if you want to uh, to preserve you from this manipulation you have to uh, to take distance and to think uh, how, how it was in the president time uh, myself uh, i began to to be a journalist uh, during the war in uh, in yugoslavia at that time i produced uh, uh, daily uh, daily report um, it was done with all the, the wires from the news agency around yugoslavia and on the other part it was the what nato said so the, at the beginning of the conflict it was the same story but every day it was more and more different it was very strange for me i wasn't in uh, in yugoslavia at, at that time and uh, i was thinking something in the middle must be the truth and it wasn't when the the war ended immediately i have some friends uh who, who go in uh, in uh, yugoslavia in serbia and in kosovo and immediately the, the 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 next day everybody knows the truth was with the new the news agency around ukraine not the news agency from europe and uh, and the us no from uh, uh, Greece, from uh, Cyprus, from Albania, from everywhere around. And uh, what NATO said was totally wrong, but totally wrong. So after that, I have seen 9-11. Uh, That's something very strange. Nobody knows really what happened that day. Uh, <clears throat> and it's impossible to know because the US forbid to everybody to go uh, on the uh, in New York and in Washington on the on the places. No one journalist in the world was able to to go to these places. So nobody knows. The US said we will give you some uh, uh, proof of uh, evidences of what happened, but they never done any uh, anything credible. So we can only think first why they uh, uh, they organize such uh, uh, blind. Uh, uh, blind event like that and uh, we can think with uh, how they they did by the past during your your studies in geneva you said you have uh, uh, contact daniel ganser he wrote a book about uh, how the the nato organize some uh, uh, assassinations and some coup d'etat during the world war not in the vaso pact but inside europe against the allies nato was against the allies during all the cold war they organized the coup d'etat in, in Greece, 
they uh, killed the prime minister in Italy and so on. Uh, you know, in France, they have done uh, incredible things and the, the French people don't know that. Uh, for instance, they uh, support financially and militarily, they support the OAS, the, the secret army organization. That's the people who oppose to the independence of Algeria, and these people tried 40 times, 40 times to kill General de Gaulle. But this is NATO. I've done a, a, a big uh, debate with uh, um, Richard Holbrook, the, the famous uh, U.S. diplomat on what topics in uh, in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> what what we have see uh, with 9/11, it's something organized inside the U.S. against the U.S. Well, okay, they use this as a pretext to attack. Uh, Afghanistan, but they have prepared the, the, the war against Afghanistan since July, not since uh, September. And they also use the, the same story against Iraq. You, you remember, of course, uh, the story of the, the, the chemical attack with uh, Colin Powell, but they also said Colin Powell said at the, at the United Nations that uh, 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 Iraq was a co-organizer of 9-11. They use now 9-11 against Iran. Against Iran, they, they uh, uh, size uh, the property of Iran in, uh, in the US because uh, they, uh, they are organizing a trial of uh, Iran for 9-11. The next time it, it will be uh, Russia, of course, or China, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, um, that's one of the things that exactly what you said, that's one of the things that makes me angry. I'm an American citizen, but I'm also a European citizen, a Croatian. And first, what concerns me is my own government. And as you said, when I learned about NATO carrying out state terrorism, assassinating Aldo Moro, uh, I read uh, other instances from Daniel Ganser's book where they sent in NATO uh, military uh, so, you know, special operations soldiers into grocery supermarkets and they shot, you know, and shot and killed. I forget which European country. Uh, they blew up a school bus with with uh, European children. I mean, this was uh, NATO and uh, each of our European countries, intelligence agencies killing us. This is like uh, this is terrorism. I and mean, how can you trust these people? This is a great uh, evil. Uh, you mentioned Kazakhstan. I also lived for a few years in Kazakhstan. I was technically working for Nur Sultan Nazarbayev at one of his. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, tech, I never met him, but at one of his uh, schools. Uh, but anyways, you, you, you talked about this, uh, uh, the information war uh, recently on Voltaire Network. You were t uh, wrote an article about it, and uh, you said that NATO has won the cognitive war against its own citizens uh, in the West. Uh, indeed, one, one year ago, my Patreon, where I received donations for this channel, was terminated uh, during the same week that, that there was an article written about uh, from the Associated Press that was written together with the Atlantic Council, NATO's think tank. Uh, and they mentioned my podcast um, in a negative way. And that same week, my uh, Patreon was deleted. And so you can see this uh, information war. Um, I've never seen such strong and successful propaganda like we are seeing now surrounding this Ukraine situation. So many people I know in the West are believing the propaganda uh, and they are now on social media and big tech is 
deleting so many people. Twitter, just yesterday, uh, Pepe Escobar's Twitter account was deleted. Uh, you know, you, my YouTube account is almost going to be deleted. Facebook, Instagram, uh, Russia Today, America was shut down. Uh, it really feels like we are in a you know world war where, where everything, all the information is is. It's only one side. It's only as you said, NATO, US, EU perspective, and that's it. Um, you know, what can you, what is interesting for you about this information war that we are in right now? And I'm sure Voltaire Network has also suffered uh, censorship. Mm. Yes, a lot of, <laughs> uh, much that, than the censorship, much more than that. We were physically attacked a lot of time. So, uh, <clears throat> After 9-11, there was a war in Afghanistan, in Iraq, after that in Libya. And most of the people, they think that uh, Libya was a dictatorship. This is absolutely stupid. You know, Libya was uh, um, a socialist country with uh, the world socialists from the... Uh, socialist French thinker of the 19th century, Proudhon, you know Proudhon. Uh, so he was, at that sense, it was uh, a socialist. It, it was uh, um, a very minimum state. And uh, they accomplished a lot of great things. You know, it was the, the, the most wealthy people from all Africa, including South Africa. Now it's uh, uh, all is destroyed. You, you can't you can't live more in in this country. I was member of the the last government of. Uh, Jamaria. And uh, after that, I go to, to Syria. During 10 years, I was in Syria. But when I see how the, the US uh, organized this war, they have very few GIs on the ground but they uh, uh, support 250,000 jihadists in Iraq and Syria, 250,000 jihadists. So it's, uh, the, the jihadists are the private army of the Pentagon. And now in Ukraine, the, the Nazi are the private army of the Pentagon. But unfortunately, the Nazi are more clever than the jihadists. And right now, they began to infiltrate the, the Western uh, armies, including in France, here. We, we are not uh, conscious or conscious of that. Uh, that's why I published uh, yesterday this uh, video of this, uh, this ceremony in Ukraine with these Nazi people. It, it was something like a uh, Ku Klux Klan, you know, some, something uh, 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 a paramilitary organization, everybody masked, and they prepare to 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 kill over people. Uh, <clears throat> that's why it's it is very. Uh, well, it's a very bad thing to, to support Ukrainian people without 
asking questions. Of course, you have to support the civilians, but not all the civilians. Some of the civilians are Nazi. You have not to support them. You have to ask them why they create this situation. We have now um, some uh, children coming from Ukraine. They go to to our schools, but uh, they don't speak French. And uh, between them, some of them, no, not all of them, but. Uh, uh, some of them, certainly uh, a quarter or a third of them, uh, they are talking in Ukrainian against uh, uh, some people because uh, this one is, uh, uh, is from Maghreb, this one is, uh, uh, is a black people, this one, etc. Yeah, this is one of the reasons I, I, I left the United States a long time ago for many reasons. I like to live abroad, but I also felt that um, the American empire was declining and it was going to become more authoritarian, Nazi-like, you know, you know, fascist, whatever you want to call it. And we see now in the U.S. they're creating domestic terror units, kind of like Stasi. Uh, and so it's becoming more uh, authoritarian. And, you know, I wanted to ask you about, you said the U.S., is no longer the world's leading economic power. It's now China, uh, and it's no longer the first military power in the world. You say it's Russia. I've previously interviewed Russian military expert uh, Andrei Martyanov, who talks about this. Um, yeah, and during the war in Syria, uh, you said a war that NATO forces lost. Russia tested all kinds of new weapons that NATO cannot compete with. Um, do you see the em American empire declining? um and you know what does this what does this all mean um do you, do you feel they might go crazy and start a nuclear war uh you know going forward how do you see this people are now talking about a multipolar world uh you know where where how do you see all of this no since uh, years um uh, uh some scholars in the uh, in US talk about the, the Thucydid trap. Thucydid is uh, the Greek historian from the antiquity who explained that uh, the war between uh, Sparta and uh, Athens was, in, uh, was the consequences of the decline power of Sparta and the, the increased power of Athens was, of course, a democracy, but was at the same time an imperialist power who uh, occupied different colonies. So they said it's the same now. Uh, the power of the US is declining and the war with China is uh, impossible to prevent. But the US, they tried first to attack Russia and later China, because they think they have to dissociate the, the, two, the two powers um, to be sure to win. But it's not possible for them to win. And they know that. Uh, you know, the, the Russian army is able in uh, one moment mm -hmm. to stop immediately all the communication of NATO. But without communication, uh, it's nothing. And they have also a lot of new weapons, especially uh, hypersonic weapons. 
that uh, uh, NATO don't have and are, will not have before 10 years, something like that. It's, it's so different from uh, their technology. Uh, and it means that uh, all the, the, the shields of the US are um, unable to stop the Russian missiles. So they will not create a war. I don't think they will create a war. Not against the Russian, but they are, they are already doing a war against the Europeans. They, they know that uh, Russia and China are too big for them, but they want to be the empire for the Europeans, and they will continue false flag attacks against their own allies, like they did during the Cold War. Uh, right now, they use this war in Ukraine to decide sanctions. <laughs> sanctions. Who are they to decide sanctions? <laughs> you know. That's incredible. They, they neglect the United Nations since uh, 30 years. They decide a loan sanction, which is totally illegal. And they persuade the, the Europeans, I mean the European Union, because <laughs> Russians are also Europeans, but uh, they they persuade uh, European unions to enact the sanctions against themselves. So right now, since uh, more than one week, um, Germany. Uh, don't import more gas from the from Russia. They are living with uh, their own reserves. Um, they can do like that during some months, but no more. It means that uh, if if they continue like that, <laughs> in some months. You will have no electricity in, uh, in Germany. It will be a, a country of the third world. Uh, and if uh, Germany collapse, all the European Union will collapse. Yeah, I've, I've been reading many much analysis about the collapse of the EU, even some of their own think tank white papers talking about 2030, 2035, where the EU will collapse. And um, we see Russia now wants rubles uh, for gas. Saudi Arabia is considering selling oil in Yuan uh, to China. So we're seeing a so I get what you're saying. I, I agree that U.S. is trying to keep the EU as its vessel. Um, what do you think will happen generally in, in the West? It seems like the living standards will decline in Europe and the US. Um, people talk about inflation, hyperinflation. You know, we have problems domestically in America, culturally, politically. There's talk of even some kind of civil war. Um, what do you think will happen in the United States? I don't know, really, I don't know. Um, the US want to develop only the, the military industry. They don't produce uh, any more food, any more... Uh, well, all the 
they, they read the life, <laughs> they don't produce nothing. <laughs> so, I, I remember that uh, the, the Spanish Empire was dead because they have a lot of gold, but no other things, <laughs> no food. So, so it was the end of the, the Spanish Empire because they had two more gold and no food. So the US, they have two more uh, bombs and uh, and tanks and uh, and rifles and uh, but uh, they are no food. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. And um, maybe if you could tell us, since you're um, since you're French, uh, just let us know what are your thoughts on. We've got the French elections currently. I think it's Macron and Le Pen. Um, personally, I guess I'd be more of a fan of uh, Le Pen. I, I I don't I don't not a big fan of Macron. Do uh, you think there will be? What do you think will happen with these uh, French elections? Will it be just the status quo will remain, or do you think there's a possibility for change? The situation is very simple. In France, only one quarter of the people are supporting uh, Emmanuel Macron. These people have, uh, they are happy in their life, and uh, uh, that's why they support uh, Macron. Two thirds, uh, no, three quarter of the people, they uh, they are unhappy and they want to change. Some of them to change the people and some of them to to change the system. So, Marine Le Pen. is trying to organize an opposition, but uh, because of his of the uh, of the history of his party, not because of her, she is totally Republican. But uh, his party is coming from the Second World War, and. Uh, uh, For the French, that's not the reality, but for the French, this party is the continuation of the, of the, the Maréchal Pétain and the, the collaboration with the Nazi. In fact, uh, this party was a creation of uh, uh, Jacques Focard, the head of the secret services of uh, General de Gaulle, and it was a way to uh, uh, to control the extreme right. And uh, um, Jean-Marie Le Pen was uh, working from the for working for for uh, uh, General de Gaulle, and uh, he stopped the extreme right. But the reality, but that's not what the people in France are conscious. So some of the people who, who want to change the things uh, vote for the, the left, for Jean-Luc Mélenchon. Um, the only solution will be to, to connect the, uh, uh, Marine Le Pen and Jean-Luc Mélenchon. But all the history reject this idea. And of course, it's uh, something dangerous to, to link the right and the left. But uh, Marine Le Pen is not from the right and Jean-Luc Mélenchon not from the left. Um, you, you can think, uh, for instance, what happened uh, in Venezuela when uh, uh, Hugo Chavez linked the revolutionary people with the Catholic people and make a, a, a real transformation in this country. 
So it's possible to do such thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I've got just uh, one more question. You uh, also write, I mean, you write a, a lot about a lot of topics on, on Voltaire, Middle East, mm -hmm. and um, just to get your thoughts going forward in this multipolar world, new world order. We talked about China and Russia and EU and, mm -hmm. and uh, US, and I think uh, Israel also has an important role. Um, mm -hmm. What's most important for you when thinking about uh, Israel? They seem to be flirting with the Chinese where they brought uh, the Chinese into the port uh, in Haifa. We have these Abraham Accords now where mm -hmm. Israel is appearing to make peace with many of its neighbors. Um, what is important for you when thinking about uh, Israel right now? Um, I think Israel is changing, but changing very, very slowly. <laughs> you know, they, they um, um, reject uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, Netanyahu was... Uh, um, a colonialist in the British uh, sense of the world. Uh, he was trying to, to have uh, an Israel uh, empire in all the Middle East. Okay. Right now, you have uh, an Israel government uh, much more um, much more human than that. Um, and you see, for instance, in Ukraine, they don't uh, align to the US. Uh, Israel is the only country in the, in the Western world who refuse to receive President Zelensky in the Knesset, in the um, in the National Assembly. They only accept to have a, a talk with, uh, with him by Zoom video with the, the MPs, not with the National Assembly, individually with the MPs, because they are aware of the uh, this Nazi phenomenon in Ukraine. They are aware that uh, um, President Zelensky, which is Je Jewish, is not at all representative of the Jewish people, uh, is uh, the product of uh, uh, media shogun and uh, uh, an oligarch in, uh, in Ukraine which is also Jewish people, but which is also the, the parrain, the, um, the head of the mafia in Ukraine. And uh, that guy tried a few years ago to, to become the, the head of the Jewish community in European Union. And he was uh, ousted by all this uh, Jewish community. So Israel was very cautious with Ukraine. And uh, um, Naftali Bennett, the prime minister, uh, who goes to, to Ukraine, uh, said uh, at the end to Zelensky, you have to to oust the, the Nazi and to accept what said uh, uh, Vladimir Putin is right. <laughs> so <clears throat> I say that uh, uh, Israel is, is changing. Uh, it, it is beginning to be a, a normal state, an independent normal state. So they are now taking distances slowly from the US and they are going more to China and Russia. Yeah, I've been seeing the same thing and I remember reading about Bennett telling Zelensky 
do what the Russians <laughs> want. Um, do you have any um, other issue that you think is important for us to know about or that I haven't brought up or you know, any final thoughts uh, for us? Yes, I have something very more important. Who is doing this politics in the US? You know, uh, we are talking as the US were a democracy, but it is not at all democracy. First, in the US Constitution, there is no the democracy word at all. There is no the, the, the word the republic in your constitution. No, no. This constitution was wrote uh, to organize a kind, an, um, a kind of British monarchy in the US with US people, not with British people, but with US people, but the same kind of system. And uh, fortunately, uh, the, the people who, who, who did the war against uh, the British Empire, those people uh, impose uh, 10 uh, amendments to the Constitution. So right now it's more equilibrated. But uh, uh, this system is always in few hands, not in the people's hands at all. And uh, since uh, 30 years, a small group, no more than 100 people, very, a very small group, um, take the power. This group, I will call them the, the, the Strausians, because they are uh, disciples of a philosopher called Leo Strauss. These people, you never see them in public, sometimes, but uh, very few times in public. You know only them because they are supported by a, a, a group of journalists, of media, uh, what uh, we call the neoconservatives. But neoconservatives are no, they, they don't have political power at all, they are only media power. The neoconservative and the Strausians, they are uh, but the same families, in fact. Uh, that, way, that way I said it's a very, very few people, very, very, very few people. Uh, in the US, you, you discover these people with uh, uh, Paul Wolfowitz, who was a direct disciple from uh, Leo Strauss. Uh, he was the number two in the Pentagon during uh, George Bush, the, the son. And uh, you know also uh, uh, Daniel Pearl, uh, that guy was the uh, was, uh, an advisor in the Pentagon, but it was also, before that, the man who organized the war in Yugoslavia. He was a special advisor for all political affairs to President Izet Begovic in Bosnia Herzegovina. When at the same time, uh, at the same time, Osama bin Laden was the advisor of, of Izet Begovic for military affairs. You have at the same time, Pearl and Bin Laden in the same government, doing the same politics. 
in France, we have also uh, um, Bernard Henri Lévy, which is a so called philosopher, uh, was also advisor to Zed Begovic for the media. Hmm. So, these people, they first organized the war in, uh, in Yugoslavia, and after that, they organized. Uh, I organized 9-11. You, you know, this group, uh, uh, Project for a New American Century, mm -hmm. that's what the same people, all the, all the, the, the founders of uh, Project for a New American Century, they're all Straussians, all of them. First, of course, uh, Robert Kagan, the historian, Uh, and uh, the wife of Robert Kagan is uh, uh, Victoria Nuland. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the woman who organized the end of the war between Israel and Lebanon, you know, um, when the Hezbollah was uh, winning. Face of the war, don't, don't invade Israel, of course. No, she, she stopped the war. And after that, she organized the, the coup d'etat in, uh, in Ukraine in uh, uh, 2014. And uh, now she organized this very war in, uh, in Ukraine. You know, she, she's the number two in the in the uh, Secretary of State. But uh, she was with, uh, with George Bush and with Barack Obama at the same time. She was with uh, uh, Joe Biden uh, when he was vice president. She organized the um, the, the rapt of uh, Ukraine, because she put Hunter Biden, the son of uh, Joe Biden, uh, as the head of the gas system in, uh, in Ukraine. And she organized with Hunter Biden the um, military biological centers in uh, in Ukraine. You know the the Nazi and the Shortsian are very closed. And this is something coming from Leo Strauss himself. Leo Strauss was a Jewish people going out of uh, Europe because of the Nazi. He goes to US and became a teacher in uh, uh, Chicago University. And he said to his followers, don't trust the democracy, they are too weak. If you want to, to prevent to be killed by a dictator, you have to do yourself a dictator. So that's why they have now these links with the uh, Nazi. Yes, growing up uh, in America, you know, we were taught early on the Constitution. You know, as you mentioned, I have right behind me the the Bill of Rights there and. Uh, you have this idea that we live in this republic, and it's only later I realized I, I'm a citizen of the empire, and that it's basically an oligarchy, as you said. And people come, people look at Putin; he's been in power for 20 years. Well, you know how long has had Merkel been in power? And then you look at, in the U.S. You had in the 90s it was Bush, and then Clinton, and then Bush, and then Obama, Clinton. And now we basically ha we basically have Biden, which is again a, a sort of a repeat of, of Clinton and Obama, and the same people as you say have been in power for the last 
30 years and they just keep running constant uh, regime changes. Uh, so yes, I, I, I would agree. Um, do you have any then um, final thoughts to leave us with? I'm glad that you're optimistic that uh, you don't think there will be a World War III. So that's good. Uh, any final thoughts uh, for us? Uh, I think the world is dividing now, dividing in two, two blocks. And these two blocks, we no more communicate. And we are in the small block. We are 10% of the, of the humanity, but uh, we are proud to be with the US. <laughs> ah, that's yeah. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, yeah, we we are seeing this bifurcation, uh, as they call it, um, and Mackinder's World Island growing, right? As you said, the majority of the world's population and resources are coming together. Even here in Mexico, where I am, the president is uh, not going along with Uncle Sam, and so we, yeah, we clearly see this trend. Um, what are the, you know, what is the best website uh, or websites that, that you recommend for people to follow? I, uh, Voltaire, um, are there books or, or projects that people uh, should know about? And, you know, how can people support you? The problem now is much more bigger. You, you have not, uh, the problem is that you must learn history. You must learn history. The U.S. never win the Second World War. It was the USSR, not the U.S. The, the, the world, now the world is, is built with a lot of uh, uh, stupidity. We, we ignore our own history. We are only believing what we have seen with uh, Hollywood films, so you have to, to search the, the documents from the beginning. Don't believe what they said about the, about the documents. Read them. First, read them. That's the first thing to do. And with the, with the media, you you never believe the, the the first screen never believe that when you see um for instance um two weeks ago we had uh, in france a big show to explain us what happened in ukraine on the, we, we have a, a public, uh, a public TV, a state TV, uh, who explain us uh, that the Russians are bad and uh, that uh, the Ukrainians are good. They interview the mayor of Lviv. And of course, that guy said, uh, we are uh, resisting against uh, the Russian beer. <laughs> but they never explain that this guy was an oligarch, a billionaire, that he was owning the... Um, most of the of the TVs and radios in uh, in his country, and uh, then he was uh, uh, putting uh, Nazi uh, propaganda uh, on the air. They never explain that uh, just. Near his office, there was a, a very big building to the glory of Stefan Mandela. So they was lying to us very, uh, 
there was very few of them. But it, it was absolutely false what they what they did. And it's very simple to to verify what I said. So be very cautious with uh, with the media. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, simple to uncover this stuff. Uh, and I agree as a professor, former pro professor of history and political science, that's what I tend to do. And I would force my students to read the declassified CIA operations where, you know, like uh, Operation Ajax, how they overthrew the Iranian government unethically, right? Um, Operation Northwoods and so, so many of these uh, operations. That's that's how, that's so what how we have to think. Uh, and I guess your best website is VoltaireNet.org. Yes? Yes. Yes, yes. VoltaireNet.org. Yes. And it's in different languages. You can read it in Spanish, French, uh, and people can, can support you there, right? That's the best place to support yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> of course, <laughs> because in fact, we have much more attack than we have support. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just the name of the game and i see your books are still available on amazon right the the big lie yes, and yes, the, yes, mm -hmm. yes yes you can uh, they're in english uh, as well and you, you can get them in kindle yes, actually yes. i'm i'm going to purchase them in kindle and well uh in any case you know i've been a regular reader of voltairenet.org and so i highly recommend uh everyone to bookmark the website uh, if you if you, if you didn't know about uh uh, Terry Maison's work in Voltaire and merci for being on Geopolitics and Empire. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this Geopolitics and Empire podcast. The website is geopoliticsandempire.com and I encourage you to sign up for the free email list that goes out with each podcast and every weekend with a collection of news headlines. The newsletter and website are our last lines of defense. We're being censored and deplatformed. It's nearly impossible to find Geopolitics and Empire on the Google search engine. We've been blacklisted. YouTube frequently takes down our videos with strikes. Facebook restricts our page. Reddit and Twitter take down posts. And after the Associated Press mentioned Geopolitics and Empire in a 2021 article co-written with NATO, our Patreon account was terminated. Vimeo also terminated our Pro account. The best free way to help Geopolitics and Empire is to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or elsewhere and subscribe to all of our media channels. You can find the video broadcast now on five platforms, Odyssey, Rockfin, Rumble, BitChute, and Brighteon. You can find the audio broadcast on the podcast ecosystem, SoundCloud, Apple, Spotify, and so on. My current favorite social media channels are Twitter and Telegram, but you can also find us on Gab, MeWe, Minds, Float, VK, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Finally, Geopolitics and Empire is in dire need of funding to continue. You can leave a donation, purchase a consultation with the host, or become a member to receive additional benefits. We also produce a weekly broadcast called Dissident Thinker for members and Rockfin subscribers only. We will continue to fight the good fight come hell or high water. Thank you for listening.